And hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Danny Segal, and if you're looking for intermediate PF Crossfire, uh, welcome in. Um, so I will start with saying that Crossfire, believe it or not, is not the easiest part of a debate round to learn, and it's not the easiest part of a debate round to teach because it is very structuralist. That being said, I've been in this game for years, and it's made me an animal. There's rules to this here, so I made me a manual, and here it is, the 10 Cross Commandments. So let's get right into it. The first and arguably the most important to cross commandment that you can learn is that you should enter each and every crossfire with confidence. Sorry about that. What I mean by this is not that you should be confident that you're the best debater in the room or that you're better than your opponent and you're going to crush them, anything like that. No, you should be confident in your ability to answer any question and ask good topical questions. There are a few ways you can do that. The first is that it comes with experience, it comes with time, and it comes with getting into that headspace. And what I mean by that is there's almost a benefit to tricking yourself into believing that you're gonna be okay. Um, that might be a general uh, rule of life or a rule of thumb for life. Um, and obviously easier said than done, uh, but the second and more controllable way that you can improve your confidence in a crossfire is by knowing the ins and outs of topics. If you really understand um, what what topics, what arguments uh, on topics are, how to respond to them, how they interact with each other, then it's very hard for a, for a first speaker or uh, any kind of speaker to surprise you with any kind of question. That being said, the other hand of that is that you wanna make sure that you're making arguments throughout the round that you can defend in crossfires because crossfires are the real test for being able to defend your arguments. So basically the point is here that all the other nine commandments that I'm gonna tell you are important, but none of them are really gonna work if you're not confident in their ability to work. So rule number one, thou shalt enter each and every crossfire with confidence. And I stand by that 100%. The second commandment of the 10 cross commandments, that thou shalt approach each crossfire differently. What I mean by this, that there are three different crossfires of the round and each of them are in, a, in their basic sense, very similar. You know, they're taking turns asking questions and a lot of, most of the, uh, you know, following eight commandments apply to all three of them. But there should be different strategies and different things that you're trying to do in each of the three crossfires. So in first crossfire between the two first speakers, you should start poking logical holes in your opponent's case, ask questions about framing of the round. So. The way that I approach first crossfire as, a, uh, as primarily a first speaker is one of two ways. The first is that we would think about ways that we want the round to be framed, and that kind of stuff can be done before the round. And there are some questions that you can ask in a lot of different rounds. Like you can ask weighing questions in first crossfire, like, um, like what kind of impact do you think is the most important, which is not a great question uh, per se, but like things along that line of um, how do you think this round should be framed, and then you can start that debate as early as possible. The second and more uh, frequent for me kind of question that I would ask in first crossfire are more topical questions where I'm trying to poke holes in my opponent's case. And the way I would come up with these questions is I would just flow, um, I would sit, be sitting there flowing their case as, I'm read, as, as they're reading it, and whenever I hear something that doesn't really make sense to me or seems like a logical leap that is not explained, or something that might just not be true, I would just write a little question mark next to it on my flow. I would have about three, maybe four of these in the bank. I would go up there and start asking questions about things that I did not understand. That does not mean clarification questions per se. It's, it doesn't mean, can you explain your second contention? But it is specifically, this is your link. How does this make sense if this is true? Stuff like that. Those kind of questions are the main purpose of First Crossfire and they help set up um, your partner's rebuttal later in the round. Second crossfire is a little bit different, and in my opinion, a little bit less important. What I say here is that you should ask questions that, as opposed to first crossfire, when you're trying to disprove your opponent's case, in second crossfire, you're trying to disprove your opponent's rebuttal primarily. Um, there are a few different ways you can do this, or a few different like parts of the rebuttal that you can do this. Um, you can do it in terms of weighing, like you can in first crossfire, ask questions like, um, like about the contextualization or the size or the magnitude of your opponent's impact. 
or you can ask questions about um, the actual content of their frontlining, content of their defense, stuff like that. At this point in the round, there's a lot more ground for contradictions because there's a lot more arguments being made by your opponents as opposed to in first crossfire when it was only a case that has already been read. Um, so in this situation, what you really wanna do is think about the um, premises of the different arguments that your opponents are making because in any given rebuttal, there are probably you know, at least 10, 15 different arguments being made by your opponent. Um, and some of them might contradict each other. Some of them might uh, be based on assumptions that they've previously disagreed with or assumptions that are just not true. So they are similar first and second crossfire, but second crossfire should mostly be about your opponent's rebuttal, some, in some part about weighing. Grand crossfire, the crossfire with all four speakers, uh, is a little bit more different and again, a little bit less important. I was always a good uh, rule of thumb that I've been told is that it's hard to win a round in grand crossfire, but if you go, if you do things wrong, it is not super hard to lose a round in grand crossfire. And what I mean by that is you definitely, the main thing you do not want to be doing in grand crossfire is giving your opponents chances to make up for things that they've been previously lacking. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I see debaters consistently make especially at the intermediate level. What I mean by this is, let's say you're collapsing, you're going for your second contention, and um, your opponents didn't really read that much defense on in rebuttal, and in their summary, they dropped it completely in terms of defense. So the biggest, the worst thing that you could do in that situation is you could go up in Grand Crossfire and ask, you didn't respond to our second contention. How, how do you refute that? Or um, there's like just like mentioning that there's a lack of coverage on your second contention is definitely not what you want to do. If you're winning an argument in grand crossfire, what you want to do is steer the conversation away from that argument because like you're not going to gain anything from that other than maybe pointing out that they didn't respond to it, but you're giving them a chance to make something seem like it's not new if it's brought up in final focus because it was brought up in grand crossfire. If you don't mention it and you keep the attention of the judge and the attention of your debaters on their case or on things that they are like struggling to respond to on their case, stuff like that, then uh, you're going to have a much easier time uh, winning the round in the final focus. This is not necessarily exactly true for defense, I would say. I would say that you don't want to draw attention to your unresponded to uh, contention, but if, for example, your opponents um, are going for their first contention and they dropped a piece of defense or they dropped some turn in summary, it's not the worst idea to mention that drop piece of defense because if you make, but only in the case of you making it very clear that it was dropped in summary and emphasizing that this is something that you're definitely going to hear as a judge in final focus. So the judges are ready knowing that, that it's important and um, already like making the decision that this was not covered in summary. And if it's covered in final focus, it might be too late already. Right. 